No, don't shout at me. Uh, I'm defending fascism. No, I'm exposing you as a fascist. Because, because... Do you realize... Uh, I'm, I'll tell you how. You asked me a question. Hold on. Are you familiar? Are you familiar with the black shirts in Italy or the brown shirts in Germany? Do you realize that they would go to campuses, goons, and would stand in the back of the room, and when somebody tried to make an intelligent presentation and answer questions, they would shout them down, yell at them, try to intimidate them, and count as success if they could get the event canceled and the speaker threatened. But see, the problem is, sometimes you get speakers like me who are not scared of people like you. We recognize your frauds. <laughs> I recognize, I recognize that ultimately you are afraid of ideas. You're not willing to engage with me. Yes, you're afraid of ideas. You're not afraid of fascists. You think I pose a threat to you? I'm an immigrant. I came to America with nothing. What threat do I pose to you? You've kind of thrown out some fairly incendiary facts or, or claims. Uh, the year before the Civil War, not a single Republican owned a slave. The big switch is a lie. Nixon's strategy is a hoax. We hear a lot about fake news, and you're talking about fake history. But I only hear you talking about it. Why don't I hear others? I don't see uh, conservatives out in the street with their children's history books burning them in a pile. I don't see students here at this university taking their history books and complaining about the falsehoods in it. So why is that? And would you be willing to come to this university and debate our top scholars on these topics? The answer is absolutely yes. Uh, not only do I welcome that opportunity, but I will debate up to six opponents at the same time. Um, I, my, my leading public critic on this, the Princeton historian Kevin Cruz, um, who says things like, there was not that there was a, a big switch. And then when I, pull, when I point out to him that there wasn't. He says, what about Jesse Helms? What about Trent Lott? Uh, what about John Tower? And I say, well, let's not debate apples and oranges. Those men are not Dixiecrats. Just to find a Southern Democrat who became a Republican isn't going to make your case. You have to find racist Dixiecrats and show me that those guys, which, who are countable, if you, if you Google racist Dixiecrats, a whole number of names will come up on your phone. We're talking about those guys. And so I told Kevin Cruz, why don't I come to your home campus, Princeton University, let's have a debate in front of your own students. You have all the advantages of being on your home ground. You, uh, it's, you, you're going to have the home team advantage. His response, I won't do it. Uh, he refuses. He says it's not the proper format to resolve these issues. Think of it. Debate is not a proper format to resolve an important difference of agreement. Um, and I take that to really mean that what he's saying is, look, here at Princeton, we have enough leftists in the history department that we've got our students completely brainwashed. Your type is not going to be welcome here because the only thing you can do is make converts, and that's going to be incendiary for us. Uh, so we're not going to let that happen. It seems as though you're trying to point fingers at the Democratic Party. As an individual that has grown up in an alt-right area, I am no stranger to listening to other opinions, so I appreciate you coming out and saying your opinion. I just think that um, you're pointing a lot of fingers at us currently, and I feel as though, as a nation, the Republican and the Democratic Party should be working together, not pointing fingers, rather, but coinciding and working together to create bills and better plans for our country, and I think this is the way that we can fix America. How do you feel about that? I agree 100%. Uh, I'm a product of the Reagan years. Uh, if you remember, uh, Reagan and the Democrats uh, legislated tax bills together. They did social security commissions together. They did a tax reform in 1986 together. There was a lot of bipartisan support for the uh, Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Treaty with Gorbachev and the Russians. Not that there wasn't disagreement, but there was the ability to work together. And the media reflected that debate. CNN, for example, had a famous show, Crossfire. And they would have Pat Buchanan on the right, Michael Kinsley on the left. That's the America I came of age in. And I long for it now. 
The reason, but we don't live in that America. Think of it, would CNN today dare to have a show in which they had, let's just say for example, me against Rachel Maddow. I mean, a debate admittedly that would be more like one hand clapping, but nevertheless, they wouldn't dare. And they won't, they, when they cancel Crossfire, they decided to go full left. They'll have a panel of eight people, they're all anti-Trump. They don't allow debate. So how do you expect to have compromise when the mainstream media has arrayed its guns against Trump and they see their job as trying to take him out. The, if you want to know why I seem passionate now and not quite the same guy I was in 1985, it's this. I always thought American politics was a fair-minded debate between reasonable people who disagree, and I wrote and conducted myself that way. But then when I went through what I did with the Obama administration, when I stood in a courtroom and heard a bailiff go, United States of America versus Dinesh D'Souza, when I began to deal with these people, I realized we have seen a gangsterization of the US government. I will tell you, based upon the deepest bone in my being, that if the Obama administration could have locked me up for 20 years for giving a $20,000 political contribution, they would have done it. They would have been delighted to do it because they did not see me as a critic, but as a deadly enemy that they needed to take out. That was the way they looked at it. And so I'm saying, you're very naive if you don't realize that this is going on in America. This is today, we don't live in an America where if the government comes after you, they're not gonna send two gentlemen with a file to talk to you. They're gonna send police cars, helicopters overhead, automatic weapons, and until it happens to you, you won't believe it. But when you do happen, it does happen to you, you do become politically somewhat radicalized because you realize this is going on in our America and we do need, before we can have compromise, we need to stop it.